this is how you make an entrance with a catapult. Bit of warm up, Mr. Bit of, bit of warm up, you can't beat a bit of a can chase. Oh! In, there you go, see? <laughs> Telekinetic cool. can chase. <laughs> strong in this one. That was a moving target. Moving target, I thought, oh, I thought I'd have a shot. But you can't beat a bit of a, a bit of a can, can chase. You can do anything you like, accuracy shooting, whatever. Going back to shooting a can is just like being a kid again. Doesn't matter whether you're 50 or 5. On fire. <laughs> Stop there, shouldn't we? Yeah. <laughs> I have one more. There we go. That's not a bad start. Bodes well, doesn't it? <laughs> well, I'll go and pick that up and we'll get started, eh? Yeah. With Wayne looking like he can't miss, we head off in search of squirrels. Mr. Crow has given us permission for a mooch while he is off hunting wild boar in Germany. When they're standing nice. around and they're alert and they're twitching their tail, so they tend to you know, sit there tighter and will almost try and call you off. So they'll stand there and call at you. So him twitching his tail and dotting around is a good sign he might hang about. One problem in this wood is the maturity of the trees. These squirrels yeah. can find safety high up in the branches. So what we could do with somebody else going the other side of the tree. Somebody else goes around the other side and it'll force them to come around this side so we can take the shot. Where it's just us two, I think he's going to play the, the cat and mouse game. If we go around, he's just going to keep going round and round and then using the tree to obscure himself. They're not stupid. <laughs> then we find one busy in the leaf litter. It's close, but not close enough. With fewer squirrels on the ground than we'd hoped, Wayne starts knocking on the doors oh, yeah. of the drays. Oh, it's there, it's there, it's there. Trying to get a shot through all these twigs and branches is really tricky. There he is. There he is. Wayne needs to grab more ammo. He says that the new steel round he's found works for all his quarry species. I've got a new ammo that I'm trialling out here, which I'm dying to tell you about. <laughs> you haven't asked me yet. These are 11.9mm. Right. So they're a perfect balance between 11mm, well actually 11.1mm, which is what I normally use. And normally when people talk about 12mm, they're 12.7mm. So you go from 56 grams up to 85 grams. Whereas because these are 11.9s, they're exactly in between the two at 6.96, so 7 grams. So I'm thinking these are going to be a really good all-round ammo to, to sort of cut between the two. Rather than going from 11mm steel to 11mm lead and 11.9 steel, I'm thinking it's going to do the job all round. Okay, and will we change between um, fur and feather? Well, this is it. This is what I'm hoping with the 11.9s, that it can be an all-round thing for the fur and feather. Okay. Rather, because historically up to now, I preferred the lead for fur and steel for feather. But with the balance of the weights, we have to do it on ballistic gel, Dave, won't we? Yeah, yeah, definitely. We have to do it on ballistic definitely. gel. But I'm thinking that's going to be a good all-round thing. So it's cheaper than the lead. And as you say, you're switching between the two. There's not such a big difference in balance of weight, so holdovers. It'll be one, one weight for everything. OK, so we'll develop consistency with the shooter as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you're not switching between like five and a half grams and eight and a half grams. You're seven grams right the way through. Ideal. Hopefully. We are definitely putting in the miles and decide to have a look at the ferals that were in the main farmyard when we arrived. Oh my God. Again, Wayne is tantalisingly close. As it with the capital, you only ever hope to be there or thereabouts, and all our shots have been within like a 50, 60 mil circle. That sort of ranges out to 20, 25 yards just not been dead centre. Um, it's unfortunate, but it's the way it's going at the moment. Just nice to have one. Just one would do. We've, 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 we've walked. We've, we've walked. <sighs> we, we, what time is it now? Quarter to one. We've been on it for, what, four hours or so? Yeah. Um, we've seen a couple of squirrels, seen a couple of pheasants, haven't been able to get anywhere near a pheasant for a shot. Um, yeah, the ferals. We've had the misses on the ferals. So, but it's not going to take long for them off the, off the market, I think. I hope. <laughs> Yeah. 
We go back across to the other side of the farm and he spots a squirrel tucked up on a branch. never know <laughs> you will never know the relief of that for me <laughs> my heart is absolutely racing um, I'll get my, my club out just in case that's a shot right through the eye always wary with these not like Childley not like Childley I haven't got that big a set <laughs> oh wow He's twitching around, but that's a shot right through the head. But I always like to just make sure, make sure. Oh, there's no need to. There's no need to. I don't think we, I don't know whether people would. <laughs> <laughs> you don't know my relief. Oh my God. Well, wow. Pressure shot, Wayne. We've been at this for like four. Yeah, about four, just over four hours now. Yeah. Um, coming round off that track there, literally just the, the brain kicks in and you just see something that's not not right, it shouldn't be there. And I was like, no, what's that? Is that a squirrel? He, he was facing away from us, so we were on him for ages and then he turned, come back across. I thought, yeah, we're finally gonna get a shot. And then thankfully, he sat up tight, just in here, just as I could still just see through him, through there to him and uh, managed to get a shot through to him. Uh, 11 mil lead that was, uh, as you can see, right through the eye. Um, I, I, can't, I, can't, I can't tell you the relief on my face. Adrenaline's going. Yes. I, I'm just so pleased that I thought we were going to draw blank. I really think we're going to draw blank. And I did say earlier on, there's one thing we want to get. I really want to get a squirrel. In sort of order of terms of things, for me, it's squirrel first, then a pheasant, and then ferals come last. So to get the squirrel, which is the highest on the list for me, I'm, I'm over the moon with. Oh, awesome over the moon with. Awesome Thank awesome you. As normal. <sighs> Pressure's well, off. Close calls though. We've had, some really, We've had some really close calls. It was only a matter of time, I think. But. You know, you, you, when you miss, and you're only just missing, it's, you're still shooting well, but it's just, you're not, you're not really, it's, you can't really beat yourself up for, for missing by half an inch. When you're looking at distances 20, 25 yards, and you're missing by this, it's disappointing, and you do beat yourself up, but it's still good shooting, you know? Oh. But we've got our, uh, we've got our yeah, rewards. It's really weird, we've got one squirrel, but it means so much, I don't know. It's, it, it's squirrel, massive, it? yeah, to me, it, that means, oh, I am so happy with that. It, four hours is nothing. Uh, it, it, I wouldn't care if one I'm empty handed. The only reason why I really want to get something is because you're here. But um, I would go home a happy man being out for four hours taking home one squirrel. And you're thinking, mm, Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. That'll eat well. That's a good squirrel. Probably three quarter grown. Good bit of meat on him. Or her, should I say. Really nice squirrel. Really clean. Amazing. So pleased with that. <laughs> Me too. So Me too. <laughs> <laughs> now we just find out you have the batteries have run out. <laughs> no, no, no. It's all good, it's all good. Awesome. Awesome. It's a well earned squirrel. We have one more yeah. scoot around the barns. One on the far left. One's in the light, yeah? Yeah. And Wayne makes contact with a couple of ferals. One we can't retrieve, but this one he can. We're off the mark with a squirrel. I know. The very next, the very next shot. I was trying to find where I shot him. I know. I saw him as he lifted up, didn't he? Yeah. He sort of lifted up into the ball. But again, as I said before about the larger ammo, that's a perfect example of it. You know, we're on for the headshot, head and neck shot. As a release, he lifted up, but still had the power to bring him down, so he's not gone away injured. But I don't know where it's gone. Wayne plucks the bird to see the strike. As it's lifted up, it's hit its centre of the back, and the ball's gone in, into the chest cavity, from behind. So, like I was saying about the heavier ammunition, 
you know, with the lighter ball, it wouldn't have necessarily, you know, brought it down, it would have flown off injured with a heavier ball, which had the, the weight and the power behind it to go through and uh, stop it. I, mean, I was able to get to it, obviously, and um, dispatch it. According to David's Garmin, it's been a nine mile mooch, and in the bag, one, one squirrel and two ferals. But what a sense of achievement. Not easy, not easy. Wind, flighty, sketchy birds, not many squirrels about. Didn't even have a chance to get a camera on a pheasant, let alone a shot on a pheasant. Um, but we got the squirrel, we got the squirrel, <laughs> which is the main thing. That's yeah. And that's what we'll be talking about tonight. That's what I'll be talking about tonight for sure, but it'll make my drive home a lot easier. It's been very good. Thanks, very good. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you to Andy as well. Obviously he's letting us down here. If you'd like to give catapulting a go, head over to Wayne's website, catyshack.co.uk, where there's all the kit and info you need.